Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome, thank you so much for joining me. Today I'm going to share my haul with you from Scraps KC. There was a Shop With Me video. I took you to this wonderful creative reuse store in Kansas City and I will link the information down below so you can watch that video and also check out the website. This store is not part of the chain across the U.S., but has a really amazing mission, saving the planet, helping teachers, and the homeless all at once. Very cool. It is amazing. If you're a crafter, it is a must go. It needs to be on your list. My apologies. I don't know what happened to all my receipts. But this is my receipt from the first day. I spent $23. It took me nearly two hours to do. I went back the next day. I think I spent about $12. And then the next day, I bought a couple rolls of things for a total of $6. So I think my total was about $41. So everything you're going to see, less than $50. And I had a priceless amount of fun. I don't know where to start. So we'll just start where we are. In the video, I showed you tons and tons of stamp sets. These are the two that I brought home, it seems. This one is just a darling little winter set. I thought this would be great on envelopes for coworkers or seals for Christmas cards. Warm up hot cocoa, let it snow. Oh, what fun, happy holidays trees and snow. They would also be great to decorate little tiny tags. I just thought they were so cute. This one is Impression Obsession. I believe you've heard me talk about this brand before. I think they're made in the U.S. But the reason I bought it was because it's cheerful general sentiments. Keep right on dreaming. She always knew. Dream big, live well, be happy. Life is good listen to your heart, write your own story, and you are special. Oh, I don't love this font, but these others I absolutely love. I'm always looking for stamps that have positive general messages that I can use. Don't ever worry if stamps are yellowed. I don't care how inky a stamp is. It works. It works just fine. There are a bunch of stamps that react with my archival inks and turn pink. It does not matter. They work perfectly. Then I bought a ton of woodblock stamps, especially considering the fact that I had to bring them all home in my carry-on, but I just couldn't resist it. If you have been a paper crafter for a while, you're going to see the pattern here. I have three personal stamp exchange stamps here. The best and most beautiful things cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. Helen Keller. Personal stamp exchange almost always has fonts that I like. I have seen this stamp in other fonts, but I didn't like it as much. If I bought it before, I'm going to get rid of it and keep this one. <laughs> it takes a long time to grow old friends. I like this because it's a positive sentiment and also it goes with that theme thing that I've talked to you about. If you have stamps about flowers or stars, it's fun to work them in. This one, I like the stars. I don't need a lot of baby stamps, but it's just cute. A baby is a blessing, a gift from heaven above, a precious little angel to cherish and to love. Now I can make baby cards with stars all over them because we've put that theme together. Like flowers in the spring, I can always count on you. And again, I can make a nice flower card for a friend. Wishing you everything that makes you happy. This one, I just thought it was a good stamp. I liked it. These I picked up for art journaling. They will make great collage backgrounds. These will be gorgeous, stamped with archival ink on tissue paper. Possibilities are endless. These are very well used but I don't imagine that's going to cause us any problems. And if you're concerned about buying used stamps, let me show you right now. We're going to use blue. That shouldn't surprise you if you've been here before. You can go pad to stamp or you can go the other way. That stamp is so big that I just went this way. This would be a great piece of paper to tear up and use for a background. I'm going to stamp it out a couple times. So you can see the different tones and how it would turn out. Look at that. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. That's my first stamped image. Haven't tried it. Haven't cleaned it. Nothing. 
So don't be afraid to buy a dirty stamp because they still make pretty, pretty things. And let's be honest, it's not like I'm gonna sit around and scrub that. Then I bought Wishing You a Simply Marvelous Birthday, and it has all those cute little stars on it. Looks like it's a great quality stamp, Inka Dinka Do, and has stars. This one, I'm really lucky to have a friend like you since I tend to scare normal people away. Glad we're friends and it has stars. Now remember, each one of those I had to make it fit in my bag, so I really paced myself. And the woodblock stamps were 50 cents a piece. And as I mentioned in my other video, the stamp sets were half of what they're marked. I think it's like a permanent sale for now. I don't know. Trims and border, oh, just good stuff. Iridescent rickrack. If you haven't seen this before, you could probably buy something like this in the paper crafting section at Michael's, but I don't think the camera really does it justice for the iridescence. Be wonderful for snow. That's what I use it for is winter cards. Then twill tape in blue. I don't know what this was called. It looks like a blue ribbon, but it came on a card. Blue stretch lace. I like to buy this stuff. They call it, I don't know, fold over stretch lace. This one might be a little different, two layers. This stuff sews on nice. It sticks off a journal page. It works to tie a tag, whatever you like for 25 or 50 cents. I chose this one for fall. Look at this one. This is absolutely gorgeous. This might be my favorite thing. You'll have to tell me what's your absolute favorite thing out of this haul. And this is the kind of stuff that I was excited to buy because it's not something I've seen before. So I didn't know that I would be able to get it anywhere else. This one is super cute. It has gold in it. Here's a giant rickrack and then a medium sized one. This bag has one that's like a light blue with some gold accents in it. Maybe it's a mint green, I don't know. Might be good in shabby chic, but it'd be good for me too. This might look really nice on a fall journal page. I like to use these in borders and different things. Very excited about those. I don't know what these are. I absolutely have no idea. They feel very, very thick. I'm sure they're a product sample. Like they were the merchant Maybe they're shower curtains? I don't know. But I'm sure they were the sample to get you to pick which one you wanted to buy. I think die cuts, uh, shapes out of them. You could use stencils or a marker. Uh, journal covers. What else could we use them for? I don't know, but I just had to have them. They're a little sticky in some places because of the label that was on it. I didn't unroll them all the way in the store, so I didn't necessarily know what they looked like, but I bought, I think, two of them the first day, or maybe one the first day, and then when I went back, I knew I wanted more. This one's exactly the same all the way through. Maybe some of them were the top and some were the bottom. This one has the holes in it, this one doesn't. Yeah, I'm thinking they might be shower curtains. I don't know, but they're wonderful. I love them. This one, this one might be my favorite. I like the contrast in it. I thought this one would be good because the earthy color would help tie other colors into the journal. I mean, I can't imagine why you'd want any color except for blue, but maybe some of you would. Oh, I missed this one. It's called Shell Braid Tidy Trim. And look at it, it has gold. Let's open it up. So it's shaped like that pastel one. And then it has the gold just running through it. Really, really neat. I like that one. This was a card for one of my blue ones that was a quarter. East Texas Inns. I got this out of that 10 cent postcard bin. I just thought it was fun. Holiday Inns, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It does not have a year on it that I see. It's a little bit bowed and yellowed. Stickos. They are vellum envelopes, blue vellum envelopes, 75 cents. 
Here is the one photo that I came home with. It says, Four Girls, Flowers, and Novelties. It's a little bit crooked. I just like it. It was a fun black and white photo of a building with some cool architecture. I got two maps. I just reached into the bin and chose them. Nebraska and an old Chevron oil one of Denver. 50 cents a piece. I don't know if that's good. I have a few maps, but I recently did a journal cover. I did the inside with a map and I just fell in love with it. So I wanted to make sure that I keep maps in my inventory. In the office supply section, I just bought a couple of weird things that I like. Sales order pads for 25 cents. I thought they would make fun collage material or journaling places in a journal. Just fun. Suggestions help us help you describe your idea. What are the benefits of your idea? Additional comments or suggestions. They're blue. And I thought they'd be fun in a journal. Just had to get them. You saw these in the shop with me video. This was 75 cents, but we never stopped to see what was in it, did we? Honestly, I liked the bird. There are, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see transparencies. That one looks like snowflakes or a general pattern that we could use. This one has little dots around the edge. This one just has the edges done. A flower pattern that's a little too cutesy for me. This one says love down in the corner and has a basic geometric stripe around it. You could cover this up if it didn't fit with the theme of it and then still use it. There's the bird one that I like. Craftin' Craftin'. And you would just trim that part off and you'd have this, this bird transparency. Here's another one of those kind of cutesy ones. This one is flowers. Flowers. Uh, I don't know. Just a neat geometric pattern. So it looks like we have three dozen of them for 75 cents. And if you didn't like them, you could just cut them down and use them as transparencies for your shaker too. You could do all sorts of things. I thought it might be 10 the same. I thought it might've been a bunch that were the same, just a stack of them, you know, all the bird. So I kind of like that they're different. This one, I think it had a price tag of 75 cents. They're mini rustic stars out of 10. I was kind of worried they'd be sharp. So I don't know for sure if a journal is appropriate. It might not be. It might be the kind of thing you want to use on like a backyard decoration or a front door decoration, but I just wanted to check them out. Dyes, pretty pink posh dyes. This one was $5, super cute. This would be nice with patterned paper here and a sentiment here. And I figured I have tons of stamps that would work there. Something like this, thinking of you and then your patterns around it. This one, cute little circles. This one is one die, but notice this is two. So I have a stitched frame right here that I could do all sorts of things with, cut my papers for sentiments, whatever. And then I have the section that makes the six circles. And that one was $3. If you're familiar with Pretty Pink Posh, these are made in the USA. This is a brand that I would want to support and would want to use these products on my channel. You know, I can be a little picky. I know it. These are, I don't know, they were in the metal doodads bin and they were 75 cents and this one said joy and it was blue. Yeah, it's, it's like a metal joy thing and a snowflake. Oh my gosh, these are precious. These are precious. I don't know if there were more, but if there were, I should have purchased more. These will be great in a journal or on cards. Either way, they're not so big that you couldn't use them. I mean... Imagine this as a card right here. We're just about done, right? Some joy, some snowflakes, some trees. Love those. That was a super fun little find. When you shop creative reuse, you just, you find stuff you wouldn't think about. Red envelopes, 25 of them for 50 cents. I thought this would be great. I'm not really into slim line cards, but I did have fun when I sewed the strips of paper, filled them up with die cuts and mailed them out for Joy of Blue. So maybe I will do that for Christmas. Cross Stitch, he was just a cute little snowman. He had to come home with me for $1 and everything is in here. I don't know that I'll put him on that paper because it's not the most attractive card I could make. 
but I just thought he was cute. I had these stickers before. Somewhere along the way, I obtained a partial sheet of these, teal, blue, and purple. I loved them and I used them a lot, so I bought them again. <laughs> I don't know what this is called. It was in a bin of things that looked more like embroidery floss or string, but this one's a little wider and it was silver and I liked it. It'll be great for tags. You could glue it down the page. You could stitch across it on a bit of fabric or paper, all kinds of stuff. Uh, I think it might've been a dollar fifty or a dollar. I don't know where the tag is. These are the Scrabble tile stickers that I picked up. I think it's one big sheet. I didn't spend a lot of time figuring out what things were. Sometimes I just bought them. I think it's, it might not be a sticker. It might have been in the wrong section. I think I'm just supposed to maybe chop them up. I don't know. But my plan when I saw it was, even if it was one big sticker, it would be fun to chop up. And you can use them just like alphabet stickers. I like the idea of Scrabble tiles, but they're just too thick. I don't use them on things. And I thought this would be a fun substitute. Okay, we're almost done. Hang in there. Look at these. I... On my third visit, yes, third visit, I wanted to show Mr. Crafting and Relaxing and my friend that moved to Kansas a neighborhood that I took a wrong turn and drove through. And I didn't know how to get there except if I started at Scraps KC. So we were headed there and I said, do you want to stop in there? She's a teacher. She might want to see stuff. So she said, sure. So she also crochets. So I took her over to the yarn and I <laughs> ended up finding a section that I hadn't really looked in before. She picked this up. It was a dollar. I don't know what you call this, but I call it gorgeous blue ribbon, variegated blue ribbon that I paid a dollar for. It will make amazing ties on tags. It's very tidy looking. It has some shimmer. It's variegated. I mean, I love it. Absolutely love it. It will look great stitched on. I, I just think it's gorgeous. You could decorate anything with it. This stuff, I don't know what this is called. I don't know how much it should cost. I just thought it was amazing. I also don't know how to start it. Here you go. So I have three different rolls of it, but they're also different sizes. This green one is tiny. When I saw this green one, I thought of Andrea, my green loving friend. I don't know how to start this. This might go badly, but look at how small this one is. It's very, very delicate compared to this one that has much larger shapes in it. This would be wonderful in tassels, which I'm not great at making yet. It would also be fun just dangling off of anything tied onto it. I think it's just so elegant, has a touch of shimmer. And then of course, you know why I bought this one? Because how could you not? This one has gold in it. The other two don't seem to have an actual metallic wound through it, but this one has gold in it. So I just thought they were fun. This, the quantity of these is probably a little ridiculous for a paper crafter. I mean, I should probably put some in every happy mail that I send out, but I just, I couldn't resist them. But I absolutely couldn't resist them. This one might be the most practical out of the three of them, but these are fun. And black and silver and gray, this goes really well in a lot of things, including Christmas cards. Because if you have your pops of red, it's just, it goes well. Okay, now we're getting into stuff that came out of the drawers in the back. I talked to you about that. You pay per the ounce or you can fill a bag. I didn't fill a bag. I just did buy the ounce and I don't know what it cost. And I don't know what this stuff is, but you don't have to know what it is to want to use it and touch it. This is a bluish piece of paper with writing and boats on it. And it doesn't unfold. It's double-sided. It would make a gorgeous journal page or ephemera. You cut it off or collage. This, I'm pretty sure, is an upholstery sample. I would not want to sit on this, this couch. It's a little bit vinyl-y. I think my grandma had that couch in the lake house. But it's navy and it's gorgeous. I think this was probably someone's project. I'm not sure what this stuff is. I don't think it's that glass stuff. 
it's just fun. I think buying other people's unfinished objects pushes you in a creative direction sometime. I don't know what this is. I have no idea. You don't have to know what it is to be inspired by it. Maybe it was a placemat, but it feels to me like some sort of tree bark. It could be a synthetic project product, but it doesn't really look like it. And I managed to get it home. I would like that noted. And I love it. Again, this could be a cool journal cover, just like this. It would need some structural support and gel medium. So I don't know if I'll do that with it. It would also make excellent little bits in embellishment layers and a fall journal. All sorts of opportunities here. Cork is another medium that's great for that. And as you saw, they had tons of it. Cork die cuts really nice. This might also die cut nicely. In my circle of friends, we'll put just about anything through a die cutter. Look at this. This is the paper that I dug out of that bin. It is somewhat miscolored, aged, spilled on, I don't know, stored with other things. It feels scrumptious. It's gorgeous. I figure I could add some other colors to it if the discoloration bothered me. Like I could just say, okay, this section's pretty rough. I'll add to it and go with that, give it a distressed look. I don't know if I get it wet, if it will hold its color. And it does look like someone cut a piece out of the middle. It says on it that it was made in Japan, but I love it. It could be many journal covers. It could be journal pages. It could be a layer on just about anything. It's very tough. It's a nice thick paper. So that is my haul from Scraps KC. If you are anywhere near there, fit it into your day. It is absolutely worth the stop. And even if you say, well, you said you needed hours, so it's not worth it, go in there, hit your favorite three categories that you saw in my Shop With Me video or from my haul, and you'll still have a great time even if you can't stay that long. It is so important to support our local stores and to support these creative reuse stores. So put in the effort whenever you can. If I lived near there, I would volunteer there for sure. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're taking time for crafting and relaxing. Bye-bye.